It's Dramatic Listening, the podcast where you learn English by listening to radio plays. I'm your host and teacher, Wendy Lambert. Well, welcome back to Dramatic Listening. This is episode 82. I've got big news today. Dramatic Listening is growing. It's going to be part of my new website, English Momentum. You'll be able to find it at EnglishMomentum.com. I'm not sure of the exact date that the new site will launch, and I'm recording this early, but do stop by, check it out, and get on my mailing list. That way, you'll be the first to know when the move happens. And getting on my mailing list will actually give you lots of benefits. For one thing, you'll get an ESL newsletter called The Newsreel. It'll be a weekly ESL lesson about a news video that's on YouTube. And once you've signed up, you'll also be able to log in to English Momentum and download the dramatic listening transcripts. Okay, I'm moving them to the new website. Still free, but easier to get. Those used to be available on the podcast source app, but by moving them to my website, I'm letting you download them to your computer or your smartphone. So I really encourage you to head on over to EnglishMomentum.com and become a member. Oh, and did I tell you? It's free. We're starting a new story today. It's from the old-time radio drama called Dangerous Assignment. The main character in this radio show is Steve Mitchell. He's a U.S. government agent. He gets sent to foreign countries to investigate any problems that come up with U.S. interests in those countries. Dangerous Assignment was also a TV show. You can find several episodes on YouTube, but unfortunately not this one. So maybe the radio plays and the TV shows were actually different stories. The story I've chosen for us to study on dramatic listening is called Find 100,000 Barrels of Oil. As usual, this story is serialized on dramatic listening, so we'll be listening to it for the next seven episodes, starting today with episode 82 and continuing through to episode 88. I'm calling this episode of the podcast a disgruntled Arab sheikh. A sheikh is an Arab leader at some level. He might be the chief of a tribe, or the head of a family, or even a village. But perhaps he's even a prince. Sheikhs are rich because of the oil that's on their land. In this story, the sheikh is not happy with how things are going. That's what disgruntled means, not happy or not content with the situation. We sometimes hear about an employee getting fired from his job and coming back with a gun to kill a lot of people. That has happened in the United States. That kind of person is described as a disgruntled employee. He's not content. He's not happy with getting fired or with the situation that led up to him getting fired. So in this story, Find 100,000 Barrels of Oil, we have a disgruntled Arab sheikh. We'll have to listen to find out why he's not happy. We'll listen to Act 1, Scene 1 shortly, 
But first we have some new words to learn, 14 to be exact. Because of the nature of the story, a lot of the key words have to do with technology. When I noticed that, I thought, that's great. We've just got to do this story because a lot of you are studying engineering majors. So this story is specially chosen just for you. And remember, these words are all posted on Quizlet. So if you're a Chinese speaker, you could learn these words with English, Chinese flashcards and games at www.englishmomentum.com slash Quizlet. And now for our key words. The first word is parade. A parade is a show of floats for a festive occasion. Now a float is like a wagon, so it's being pulled behind a truck perhaps. And uh, on the wagon there's a scene and people probably, and they're all dressed up for the occasion, whatever the holiday is. These floats are used for by businesses for advertising. So each business is going to put a float in the parade. And there's probably marching bands and things like that in the parade. So at this time of year, at Christmas time, you might get to see a Christmas parade. In Chinese, that would be Yoshing. Shangdan Jie de Yoshing. Parade. The station put on a parade of half hour radio plays. Now, here, parade is something that they're proud of, that they're showing off, and uh, it's not actually something you see because it's on the radio. It's something that you listen to. Word number two a phrase, something spells trouble. If something spells trouble, what we mean is um, it, or we could say it spells trouble, or it spells danger, or it spells disaster. It makes you expect trouble. Um, you're sure that something is going to result in trouble. Ding yo mafen, or kunding yo mafen. Uh-oh, here comes Danny. He spells trouble. Whenever I hang out with him, I get caught doing something wrong. So Danny gets me in trouble. So when I see him, I think, ah, he spells trouble. Word number three, depend on. To depend on someone means to rely on them, to count on them. You could also depend on a thing. There might be a, a piece of equipment that you really need. Depend on. Kao or e kao in Chinese. You can depend on this watch to keep accurate time. It's a Timex. Depend on. Word number four, pith helmet. A helmet is something that's like a hat, but it's protecting your head. And so it's kind of hard. You might have a bicycle helmet or a workman's helmet. A pith helmet is a wide-brimmed hat that's made of a soft wood. So it's not really hard, but it's a little harder than most hats. It's the style worn by... Um, the great white hunter when he would go to Africa and uh, hunt for lions or whatever. So it's called a pith helmet. You really don't see people wearing these anymore. In Chinese, mu sui zhi zuo de zhi yang mao. The man wearing the pith helmet wants to hunt lions. He's looking for a local guide. Pith helmet. Word number five, 
jockey. A jockey is a young boy who rides a racehorse or a camel. Lotuo Huo Sai Ma de Qi Shi, also written as Qi Shi. If the jockey is too heavy, the camel won't be able to run fast enough to win the race. Jockey. Word number six, oil. Now, I know that's an easy word, but I just want to point out that in this story, we're talking about petroleum. This is the kind of oil that you get out of the earth. You have to dig down deep and pump it out, and it's used to make petrol or gas, to fuel your car, and also to make many plastics and chemical products. Petroleum oil. Shiryo or chiyo. Many wars have been fought over oil. Word number seven, hump. A hump is a bump. You could have a, a hump in the road or a bump in the road, but you also have a hump on the back of a camel. Tuofeng or Bebu de Long Ro. So it could also be a, a small hill or a mound of dirt on the ground, a hump, Xiao Chiu. Arabian camels are one humped dromedaries. Hump. Word number eight, barrel. A barrel is a cylindrical container, so it's round. And, of course, it's flat on the bottom and the top. It's cylindrical. It has a flat lid on the top, and it's made of wood or it could be made of metal, and it's used for storing liquid. So you could have a barrel of oil or a barrel of wine or even a barrel of beer. It comes to be a unit of measure, so these barrels are all the same size. And even if you don't put a liquid in a barrel, you could still measure it by the barrel. So it's a unit of measure for oil that's equal to 159 liters. Yi Tong de Liang. The world uses up 93 million barrels of oil a day. Can you believe it? That is a lot of oil. Word number nine, nursemaid. A nursemaid is a woman whose job is to look after babies and young children. Yu Ying Nu Yong, or Bao Mu, we often say Bao Mu. They hired a nursemaid to look after their children so the mother could go back to work. Nursemaid. Word number 10, sheikh. A sheikh is an Arab chief, ruler, or prince. Alabo de Jajang, Zujang, Sunjang, or Chiujang. When the sheikh died, there was a power struggle among his brothers. Each of them wanted to replace him. Sheikh. Word number 11, discrepancy. Discrepancy means there's a difference, there's an inconsistency. There's something different between these two things that should be identical. They should be the same. U ijer, ufu, cha i, or bu ijer jer chu. They ran two tests just to be sure and found a discrepancy in the results. How could this be? 
discrepancy. Word number 12, concession. A concession is a permit. If you have a permit, it tells you that you're allowed to do something. It's letting you do something. It's a, a special uh, paper that you formally had to get. Tu shu, tu shu chen, jen li chen. The company signed a new petroleum concession with the Iraqi government. Concession, so a permit to get oil, to get petroleum. Word number 13, field manager. Field manager. So this is a person who's in a management position, but he's not in the main office. He's out on the field. He's out on the work site, taking charge of the people under him there. Xin Chang Jing Li. If you want to swap jobs, you'll have to get permission first from your field manager. Word number 14, headquarters. The headquarters is the main office of a company or an organization. Gong Su Ji Guan Dang De Zong Bu or Zong Gong Su or Zong Ju. Apple's corporate headquarters looks like a university campus. Have you seen it? Headquarters. Okay, that's it for our new words. Let's listen now to Act 1, Scene 1 of Dangerous Assignment. Find 100,000 barrels of oil. This part of the play is about two minutes long. Wheaties presents Dangerous Assignment. On stage tonight from Hollywood, Dangerous Assignment, another in the Wheaties' big parade of exciting half-hour presentations. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though, trouble. But when I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize that this assignment is going to end up with me depending for my life on my own cigarette lighter. Morning, Commissioner. Get out your pith helmet, Steve. You're leaving for Arabia on the next plane. Arabia? Now, look, my days as a camel jockey are over. Don't worry. You won't be riding any camels unless you find some carrying oil in their humps. Oil? What's the deal? That's the deal. A hundred thousand barrels of it. Missing. Look, since when have we been playing nursemaid to oil companies? This is a lot bigger than any oil company, Steve. Three days ago, the Sheik's inspector found a discrepancy in the figures of one of the oil companies, the Five Star. Unless the matter is cleared up to the Sheik's satisfaction, we may lose the entire concession. Oh, well, who do I talk to over there? Mr. Williams, the field manager of Five Star. Their headquarters are in Mirani, near the Persian Gulf. Steve, get over there and find out what happened to that oil. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. For the walkthrough, the radio host introduces the show, saying it's one of the shows in the Wheaties' big parade of radio shows. 
Wheaties is a kind of breakfast cereal. By hosting the show, they get the chance to advertise. Wheaties is hosting many half-hour radio shows, so it calls it a parade, yoshing. A parade usually marches down the street. It's part of a festival. At this time of year, you might get to see a Christmas parade. There will be marching bands playing Christmas songs, and trucks pulling wagons that have actors and scenes set up on them. We call these floats. Organizations and businesses all want to have their float, and of course, for this holiday, it will have a Christmas theme. It's a mix of secular and religious. So you'll see Mary and Joseph with the baby Jesus on one float, and you'll also see Santa Claus. So a parade celebrates and it shows things off. The businesses and organizations want their float to be memorable. In the same way, Wheaties wants to show off their shows and have the chance to remind you to buy their cereal, too. Steve Mitchell is the main character in the radio show. He's the government agent who gets sent around the world to investigate when the U.S. needs to protect their interests in troubled areas. Steve says he can't even pronounce the names of the places he goes. That's because they're not English names. These are exotic places. But wherever he goes, he says, it spells trouble. This is an idiom. If something spells trouble or spells danger, it makes you expect that. It makes you expect trouble or expect danger to happen. Dingyomafen or kundingyomafen in Chinese. Then he hints at the ending of the story. He says by the end of this story, he'll be depending for his life on his cigarette lighter. As scene one opens, Mitchell goes to see his boss, who's called the commissioner, and he gets a new assignment. He has to go to Arabia. The commissioner says, get out your pith helmet, get ready to go to the desert. You're going to need a hat that's going to protect you from the sun. So a pith helmet is made of a soft wood. Um, it's a Zhiyang Mao, a kind of a sun helmet. You'll see old photos of adventurers wearing this style of hat when they're hunting in the jungle or protecting themselves from the sun in the desert. Mitchell is surprised at the assignment. He can just picture himself having to get around on a camel, and he doesn't like this idea. He says, my days as a camel jockey are over. Now you'll remember a jockey is a young boy who rides a horse or a camel in races. You can't do this job when you're older because you're going to get too heavy. And he says, my days are over. I can't do that anymore. I can't go to Arabia and ride around on camels. The commissioner says Mitchell won't have to ride any camels unless the camels are carrying oil in their humps. The hump is that bump on the camel's back. Lofung. The camel has either one or two humps. In Arabia, the camels have one hump. The camel can store water in its hump. That's why he can travel through the desert. But it would be impossible for a camel to carry oil in its hump. Oil is petroleum, shuryo or chiyo. It's used to make many things, 
uh, including the gas to put in your car. To get oil in their humps, the camels would have to drink the oil, and that's not going to happen. So the commissioner is just trying to bridge the conversation to what he wants to talk about, and that's oil. The commissioner explains that a 100,000 barrels of oil have gone missing. Oil is measured by the barrel. Itong de Liang. You could use barrels to store oil or wine or beer, but even if it's not in a barrel, it can still be measured in this way. So 100,000 barrels is the same as 15,900,000 15,900,000 liters. Now that's a lot of oil to have just disappeared. Today, that much oil would be worth about $795 million. Mitchell doesn't think this is a government job. He's being asked to play nursemaid to the oil company. A nursemaid is a woman who you pay to look after your children. Baumu. And he says, hey, come on, that's not my job. His boss explains why it is important. The sheikh is not happy. So the sheikh is an Arab ruler who owns the oil. Alabwada Jajang or Zhujang, Sunjang, some kind of, of leader. His inspector found a discrepancy. Bu yi chu. There was a difference in how much oil the company reported that it had taken out of the ground and how much the Arab leader's inspector saw go out. So the two checkers had different amounts written down. If the sheikh isn't happy, he could kick all of the U.S. oil companies out. The U.S. would lose the whole concession, that is, their permit, tushu or tushu trin. Their agreement with the Arabs about buying and pumping out their oil. So there really is a lot at stake here. There's a risk of losing a lot. When Mitchell gets to Arabia, he should talk to the oil company's field manager. He's the guy who's in charge at the work site. He spends most of his time in the field at the work site, not in the office. He's the Xincheng Jingli. The five-star oil company's main office, their headquarters, Zongbu, is in Mirani, on the Persian Gulf, Bosawan. So Steve Mitchell has his assignment. He's off to Arabia. We'll find out more about that in our next episode. So that's it for the walkthrough. Let's listen once again to Act 1, Scene 1. Wheaties presents Dangerous Assignment. On stage tonight from Hollywood, Dangerous Assignment, another in the Wheaties' big parade of exciting half-hour presentations. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though. Trouble. But when I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize that this assignment is going to end up with me depending for my life on my own cigarette lighter. Come 
morning, Commissioner. Get out your pith helmet, Steve. You're leaving for Arabia on the next plane. Arabia? Now, look. My days as a camel jockey are over. Don't worry. You won't be riding any camels unless you find some carrying oil in their humps. Oil? What's the deal? That's the deal. A hundred thousand barrels of it. Missing. Look, since when have we been playing nursemaid to oil companies? This is a lot bigger than any oil company, Steve. Three days ago, the Sheik's inspector found a discrepancy in the figures of one of the oil companies, the Five Star. Unless the matter is cleared up to the Sheik's satisfaction, we may lose the entire concession. Oh, who do I talk to over there? Mr. Williams, the field manager of Five Star. Their headquarters are in Mirani, near the Persian Gulf. Steve, get over there and find out what happened to that oil. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. Let's talk about it. If you were given this assignment, would you feel the same way as Steve Mitchell feels? He doesn't seem to want to go to Arabia. Would you? Tell me about it in the comments at englishmomentum.com slash dl082 or dramaticlistening.com slash dl082. I'm not sure where I'll be at this point. Or on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash dramatic listening. I would love to hear from you. Remember, the vocabulary is available on Quizlet at www.englishmomentum.com slash Quizlet. And for those who want to review the vocabulary and read the radio play transcript, the bonus PDF is now at EnglishMomentum.com. Log in to English Momentum, go to this podcast episode, and you'll be able to download the bonus PDF. You could also be listening to Dramatic Listening on Stitcher. Stitcher is Radio On Demand. You'll find a link to Stitcher in my show notes at EnglishMomentum.com. Well, folks, that is it for this episode. Thanks for joining me again this week. Come back again in two weeks when this story will be continued. Bye for now. Bye for now.